I'm Jo from So Creative and you may be thinking about buying a new overlocker so I'm going to show you the Brother 30 34 DWT or you may have already bought one and want to know the basics so I've just unwrapped this just taken it out of the box so I'm going to go through what you've got with it and how to use it basically and at the end, I'll show you how to rethread it. It's the most easiest machine to rethread. So literally, I've just taken it out of the box. Um, and so what does it have on it? But basically, there's things to unravel. So always with lovely brother, beautifully packaged. It's every overlocker has been test sewn. So it's got a little tester there. So first of all, we just need to unpack it all. So take all the sticky tape off, just make sure there's no more. So now I'm just going to raise my needles to get rid of this bit. So like a hand wheel on a sewing machine, always towards you. And then I've got a um, presser foot lever here so I can lift that up and there we are. So this is the, they check every machine just to make sure it's all working pro properly, which is a really nice um, thing. It's nice that it actually comes threaded, but I'm going to get rid of that and chuck that all away. So when I very first used an overlocker, I did one silly, silly thing, and it meant that it, the total thing unthreaded. So I've learned by my mistakes. So the first thing before you do anything else and before you use your overlocker, here are the threads behind, is to raise the telescopic pole, okay? So, and then just double check that all the threads are all in place. So there we are, that's all there. It's come, as you say, it's already got its tensions. So we'll leave it as that. As I say, I'm just going to do some basic things. So what does this um, 3034 come with? As always, a really great manual, and you will need it, especially if you're new to overlocking. It also comes with a DVD, which is fantastic. But to be quite honest, once you've mastered the threading, you know, that's another good way. Obviously, you'll learn a little bit through me, but there's more information on there, especially when you go into other things. Um, we have got this feature on this lovely machine. So this is a sleeve arm that comes off. So as you see, so to do some small cuffs or to do the bottom of leggings. And so that's a really lovely feature. So you can obviously use a machine just like that, take that off. And it comes with an extension table. So this is the extension table. It comes readily, it's just in a little box within the box. And this just slides on and just gives a little bit more space. Now, oh, I've got a bit of thread caught up in there. But basically, so sometimes when you're doing something, you need a little bit more extra support with your fabric, that is fantastic. It's like an extension table on a sewing machine. So that's your extension table. I'm going to pop this sleeve on back on again. So this just clicks in, back in like that, okay. So the other thing, useful thing it comes with is this, which is a, it's a, a drip tray and it literally just slides in underneath the front. So when we're using the um, overlocker, all the little bits of fabric are gonna fall into there. I'm gonna just take that off for a moment because this model, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's worth the little bit extra that you pay for because other things you get with it are various feet. Now you get a piping foot, you get a gathering foot and you get a blind hem foot as well. So that's all those. Um, this is a little cleaning brush to get the lint out. Now you will have to do a lot of cleaning with an overlocker. Um, I'll show you in a moment. So we'll do a bit of sewing and then you'll see how much uh, lint it, uh, it does create tweezers which are necessary just because sometimes your fingers are a little bit fat and this so this is the uh little allen key that's used to change the needles so you know believe me you will break needles that's the nature of the game isn't it and so we've got two needles here and let me just see if i can bring it up there so i don't know if you can notice with the needles you've got one that is slightly lower than the other. So the one on the right is slightly lower and that's quite normal. So when you change a needle, this one is the right needle, that one's the left needle. So it's there, it's not these two, it's these. 
they will unscrew. And some of the time you may want to do a three thread um, or a rolled hem, in which case you would only use one of the needles. So um, it's used to getting, uh, getting used to all of those two. So um, this is our tension discs here. And you will, most people just overlock, want an overlocker just to neaten off your edges of your garments. And most of the time, the settings just stay the same. There, it, these will change when you get more into um, your overlocker and decide that you're going to do rolled hem. So you'll reduce the um, settings of some, so some of the threads. Um, what else can I tell you about an overlocker? So basically, most people are a little bit scared about an overlocker um, because you've got all these threads. But all I want you to think about is that cut them in half. So we've got these two threads. This is our lower looper our upper looper. These two are our needles. So basically, if you look at the thread here, that's three and four, they're coming through and they're literally just going to the needles. So, you know, they're simple. So I'm going to open up the base and you'll see, the, see where the loopers are. So it just slides over like that and this just falls down. You've got a lovely little storage case here now. So you've always got access, so that will just sit in there. So you've always got, to, you know, you can find it easily. And um, some of your other bits and pieces will go in there too. So within here, if, you, if we take a look, we've got our lower looper, which is in blue. And all the threads, Seamus is in white, the actual thread comes threaded in white. But you'll have a look and see and I will show you later when we um, re-thread it. But that's the blue, so that's the lower looper. And then we've got the green, which is the upper looper. And the upper looper is really easy to thread. It's the lower looper that's the tricky one. But on this machine, it's actually pretty easy as well. So with the overlocker, which what most people like, is the fact it's got a blade. And I don't know if you can see this blade. I'm going to pop the presser foot down again. So this is the blade here. So to disengage the blade, so there'll be times that you don't want to use the blade and obviously the book and the DVD would show you that as well. Here is the little lever. So we pull that out and twist it out of the way. So sometimes you may not want the blade. Perhaps you've sewn right close to um, something you don't want to cut anything, any more fabric off. So that is how you disengage the blade. You literally pull that out, pull it, twist, and then it just locks away, and that's it, okay? Some people like to remove the blade for threading. It does make it a little bit easier, but I'm gonna leave it there for now. This here is our stitch finger. Now, I'm not gonna pull it out, but if we were doing a rolled hem, we would remove that. And what it is, here is a little, let me try and find the, my tweezers. So here, there's a little thing here, which is our stitch finger. And it's that that keeps the fabric flat when we're sewing. Sometimes when we do a rolled hem, we want the stitches to go around the fabric so we don't want them flat. So we need to remove the stitch finger. Again, everything is in the book. So I don't want to overcomplicate it, but. That's, everything is there for a reason. This is all if we're doing um, a rolled hem as well. But let's just do a little bit of stitching. Okay, so are we all right? mm -hmm. we're going to switch the machine on. I'm going to pop the drip tray on. Let's get these out of the way. So the first thing we must do is make sure the machine is on obviously and as I say we want to just double check our threads make sure that they're all coming through the loop at the back and these are all there and they haven't fallen out of their loop sometimes that happens I won't worry about the um, tension because at the end of the day we know it's been tested and it should be spot on so I'm just going to do a little bit of test sewing on this bit of denim So the thing is about an overlocker, very different to um, your sewing machine, is that with your sewing machine, you wouldn't ever just sew one piece of fabric, or well, not without stabilising it anyway. 
Um, but with this, of course, we can, I could just sew along there. So let me get rid of this little bit of uh, frayed edges. Now, you can either use your presser foot like you would do in a sewing machine, or just lift, whoops, just lift it up and hold it in place. Now, what you want to do, because the blade is here, you don't want to scrunch your fabric up too much in front of the blade because otherwise it gives the blade a little bit of a disadvantage because it's not going to be able to chomp through it. So unlike a sewing machine, you can sew into nothing. You don't have to be sewing into any fabric and you know it would rather just feed it. So like with a sewing machine, there are feed dogs under here, but they start a lot sooner if you have a look here. This, these are the feed dogs here. So they're a lot closer than they are on a sewing machine. So literally, I'm just going to hold my fabric there. There's the blade, there's the start of my fabric. And I am going to make sure my presser foot's down, which it is. Now there's no speed control. So your speed control is determined by your foot. So it might be a bit noisy, because obviously it's an overlocker and they're not the quietest of things, but I'm just going to start. So I've just started. And I'm not holding the fabric. I'm letting the feed dogs pull the fabric through. And as you can see, it's cutting off there. I can extend, or we'll make it faster. Now, unlike a sewing machine, which is where you pull out now, because I've come to the end, we don't, you must chain off, okay? So it wants to chain into nothing. So I'm now going to pull the fabric from behind. And I'm gonna chain, chain, chain. So, as you see, it's chained off into nothing. Because if I cut my, um, my threads too short here, it would all unravel. So we don't want that, do we? Because we don't want to be worrying about re-threading. I'm just doing everything that I can to help you re-thread your machine at this stage. So there we are, beautiful. I do love an overlocker. So that's just a four thread overlocking. And really, if you're new to overlocking, then really, what else do you want to do? Have a little practice and have a little play with that. So most of you are buying an overlocker because you love the stretch. I love the stretch. And um, I'm going to do it this way. And of course, when you're sewing with stretch, oh my goodness, it rolls, doesn't it? Drives you nuts. Now, normally... You know, normally when you first start making some garments with your overlocker, you will probably still use a sewing machine to sew them and then just use the overlocker to neaten. But of course, when you get a little bit more confident, you will just sew straight uh, with the overlocker and not worry about the sewing, um, not worrying about the sewing machine. So the thing to remember when you're sewing using the overlocker with stretch fabric is not to pull. It's the same as you were if you were using a sewing machine. What you don't want to do is to pull the fabric. You want it just to glide through um, so as it doesn't gather and um, make a ripple. So again, I've just lifted it. It's just in front of that blade. And I'm just going to, it. you know, if you find that you've got some ripples, it's generally because you've got a bit of kangaroo petrol with your, with your foot pedal. So it really wants you to be very fluid. So I'm just going to go for it. I've come to the end and of course I've got to chain off. So chain off and there we see. So again really lovely it's laying flat if it was all pulled out and gathered it would be because you're holding on to it and not letting the feed dogs feed it through i hope that makes sense the thing is just to have a bit of fun have a few bits of fabric to play with and i don't suppose you can see already how much there is here with all the little bits of all the little bits of fabric so if we have a look underneath I will show you. So we pull the drip tray out, open it. Oh, it's not too bad. But if that was a fluffy fabric, you would get lots of fluff down there. So it's really, really important that you keep this nice and clean everywhere around here. Okay, so I think I've just shown you some basics. I think the next thing we're going to do is I'm gonna show you how to rethread it. So now we're gonna rethread the machine. Um, it's a really good diagram and everything within the um, booklet. 
Um, but the main thing is to turn your machine off. So I'm switch it off at the side. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the threads. Woo! <laughs> Always gets a little bit exciting when you do that. Uh, so cutting these threads. Now, what some people do with their overlockers is actually they do tie them. So they tie their threads. So if they wanted to change from white to black, they might tie them. But this is such an easy machine. I really do think that you should learn how to thread your machine. It'll be much, much easier. Besides, you can't really tie your threads and take them through um, your needles anyway. Um, but anyway, I'm going to show you how simple it is. Now, obviously, I've cut those threads, so I need to... Um, get rid of them so I need to pull them through the system so I raise my presser foot now that's a really important thought so I don't know if you see I'm pulling them and they're all pulling through okay so that was the threads like with the sewing machine you must have your presser foot raised to re-thread that is because when you put your presser foot down the tensions are engaged when they're up the tension discs are open so the threads will sit through them so very important facts, okay? Now, with an overlocker, again, we always thread from right to left. So we always get the nasty one out the way first. So this is the lower looper, upper looper, and then the two needle threads. So, as I said, I like to use a pair of tweezers. So I'm just going to bring the thread through. It'd probably be easier if I wasn't using white, but I am, so. They just check, check the tension discs are open, they are. So I'm just following this blue line. So it's all numbered, four, five. I haven't done one of these for a long time. Six and seven. There's eight. And then number nine. Now I have to do, what I have to do is make sure that my, my, um, hand wheel is in the right position so i don't know if you can see there's a little lip on this here and as long as it's at 12 o'clock it's in the right position and i believe it is i'll have a look feel that's at 12 o'clock so now number nine here we slide that over, oops slide that over and i don't know if you can see but this lower looper has now enabled me to catch the thread around there so I'm trying to get my hands out of the camp out of the way of the camera so it's easier than I'm actually doing there we are so through there and then I've just got to thread that little eye there we are this is why I like to use my tweezers because that makes life a little easier so there I just poke that out the back. And now I can use my hand wheel just to click it out the way. So I'm, in fact, I'm actually going to bring it around there through the lower, lo uh, through the upper looper, looper. So that's, that's, the, um, that's the lower looper done. That's the worst one to do. And that was pretty easy. I'm sure you'll agree. So now I'm going to do the upper looper so I'm bringing the thread through, through the tension discs, and now I'm following the green. That was four. This is five. Number six, if you see here, is just the first one. Oops. There. Number seven. And then number eight is just through the eye of there. Eye of the upper looper. That's it. I don't think you can get much easier than that. So there we are. That's the lower looper and the upper looper all done. So even my lovely Mimi, who's uh, doing the um, the camera for me, she was so amazed with how easy that was for threading that she had to stop. So here we are. I'm making a bit of a meal of this now because I've got all excited. So this is the right hand needle. Come on, there we are. So through the tension disc, so we're now following the red line. So it's through here, up, around, around, and then it tells you to split. It's like a little railway line. So we're going to the right, and then I need to bring my needles up. So I'm just going to hand wheel towards me until it's up in the higher position, through there, and then just need to thread my needle. 
I could actually do with my light on now, I think, just to help. I'm sure it's all right now. And <laughs> I'm trying to get out of the way of the camera, which is quite funny. Have I got it? Please go through. There we are. I love using tweezers, even to thread needles when we haven't got the needle thread on a sewing machine. It makes life so much easier. So we're just going to pop that underneath the presser foot. That's the right needle done. And the same with the left. Actually, that is not a nice clean. That's never going to go through the eye of the needle. So let's just give it a little chop. And then, so I'm following the red line and this, sorry, I'm following the yellow line. And then to the left of the opening, through there, thread the needle. So I'm certain, I think I've done that in about, sometimes less than a minute, I've threaded that overlocker. So as I say, you haven't got much to master, but do master it because it will make your life so much easier for when you want to do other stuff. So obviously, I'm now gonna test it because there's one thing threading it and another thing making sure it works properly. So we will see. I'm gonna go down this side and fingers crossed, there shouldn't be any reason why it doesn't work. Oh, let's put the drip tray on. Press the foot down, needles. Off we go. So make sure it's not too close to that blade. Nice speed. Chain off. Cut. Yay. Beautiful. There we are. So enjoy your overlocker. Just learn the basics. Make sure that you're doing all the right stuff first. Remember, pull this telescopic pole up, don't forget that. Check your threads before you go to use them. Make sure when you do thread that you have the presser foot up. And also make sure, just double check here and keep it nice and clean. So we're so creative in Petersfield. Enjoy, thank you.